uh, Terry Sawyer and law enforcement were, re- I guess, responsible. Carl was state trooper Carl Barton. Um, and Carl Barton, let me go back to that one at Affordable Inn. I showed you where I'd paid my rent. They've got me begging for a place to live when I've done nothing wrong. They have. It is the most sick thing if they ever tell it, if it's ever told and anybody's ever charged other than me. But uh, I went to go to Reverend Moore's. Uh, Terry Sawyer took me there. Easy to get in. Edinburgh, they take me there. Got right in. Uh, this is an 06. And now then when I go back to these places, this is what they send me a rejection slip. And they don't really give me a reason other than it won't do me any good to pursue it. So Joseph's dream was on Joseph's way in Bedford County right next door. Reverend Moore owned it. I went in there, and uh, it was a brand new uh, apartments, or yeah, apartments, village, whatever you want to say. And all the units were empty and had been for a couple of months. Nobody had moved in, which is strange in itself. Brenda Ellis was the manager. I got right in, old, you know, and then I moved in uh, July the first of eleven. I mean, the minute I walk in, the air conditioning goes down. These are brand new units. Then in the wall where the air conditioning uh, is in a closet and goes up through the vents and all that, there's um, mildew and mold. There's been a uh, break in water in the back. All this starts happening, and this happens in most of the places I've rented. And then since I can't get an attorney, uh, I'm left begging is really it. Now then, I ended up, well, July the 4th was, uh, you know, when <laughs> I'm put there and I'm the monarch. I put it on the other tape if anybody cares. This is my dad. Edward the Eighth, and that was the imposter that married Simpson, and my father was legally wed to George O'Keefe's sister, Claudia Ruth O'Keefe. I was born in 39, and I'll say it because uh, if you just pick up this video, you won't know what I'm talking about. And here's where I look flap happy and all this and disorganized if you don't know what's going on with me. This is my Uncle George, and this is uh, Roosevelt. And this is in 39 when I was born. They're planning my kidnapping. My own uncle, the Kennedys, the Rockefellers, uh, Rothschilds, the Jewish, uh, Roosevelt, etc. The New World Order, or Illuminati. And they've gotten away with it. Um, the Kennedys, I said that, didn't I? Now then let me go back to um, um, Moore Associates, the Reverend out of North Carolina that owns all these and it's subsidized, um, HUD, Section 8, elderly, subsidized by the federal government. So all this happens there, and, I mean, they finally moved me. You can't believe the ongoing mess that they're doing, breaking the law in my health. So they moved me. Well, what I was going to say there is I'm the legitimate heir, um, Victoria the Second. And they've kidnapped me, brought me over here, and I've written about mind control and all this before I knew about my real name in 83, 84. Flown out to Flint, so we shot and incarcerated at Butner. What a joke because of telling the truth and tortured he was. But, uh, and that's Childers, that's an endorsement. But uh, that'll sound mixed up. Maybe somebody would go back and read the prior tapes or pull it all up on Facebook. But anyway, I've gone back in, uh, to all these uh, places, um, Section 8, which is low income. They've got me begging like I'm the scum of the earth. And suddenly they're doing background checks. What did I do? Oh, my God. It, it's unreal, really. It is unreal. I was told by this one uh, last year that, uh, and, and this is another Joseph's Way, the Reverend Moore on the Zed, it's in um, Christiansburg. 
and that's Virginia Tech Slayer. So they've got me telling about the mind control murders and who did it, and they want to kill the messenger because they're afraid of the FBI, plain and simple. They're afraid of the people doing it and uh, just get rid of me, and at least they won't know it's being done. So um, when I left Joseph's Way, I had to leave there. My God, it was horrible. You, you wouldn't believe, unless this is told, how many people get into a conspiracy and helped use the chemicals on me. It's unreal. Um, so anyway, I had to leave there, and I came back across to an affordable inn. Uh, I didn't know it was at the time. It was called Corporate Suites. And the black, black lady that ran it, Roberta, told me when I called, she said, well, you come on over here from Bedford. My brother's a police uh, officer in Bedford, and you come on over here, and we'll take care of you, and you'll be all right. Well, I lived here in Roanoke, tried to. So that was the problem. I wasn't all right. But I came over, and, and I'm not going into what happened. I stayed there three months. The few bucks I had starved and and had no clothes, one pair of shoes that I'm still wearing uh, from way back then, uh, I, it was gone in a heartbeat. So I applied to Melinda S. Moore Housing, which is Joseph's Way, Bedford, uh, the Reverend, Black Reverend Moore. Now then, I got a rejection from there. She said, suddenly, you know, they got me in there at uh, Joseph's Way, Moore owned it, um, in July the 1st of 11, stayed there seven months. Suddenly, here now, when I apply here at another one of his units, which, by the way, there was only four residents there when I applied, and I got turned down, and they won't give me the reason, said they had to do a background check everywhere I worked and uh, lived. So what happened in between the time they gassed me and all this and I passed with flying colors and moved in July the 1st of 11, and when I reapply at another one of his units here, um, and and the only thing they say is you your record of previous tenancy did not meet our screening criteria. So she wouldn't tell me anything other than it wouldn't do me any good to pursue it, my being denied. Nobody has to explain. So I'm trying to think. I have Richfield, Joseph's Way, Edinburgh. Um, I don't know who holds these people accountable. No one. How on, the, on earth other than God himself could come in, and this doesn't go back past 86. Uh, and show what was done to me before then, other than being kidnapped. And let me say, before I go here, uh, I had loving parents. My dad and mom never got to bring me home. My father's identity was stolen. Um, I don't know. I, I wrote about mind control. Uh, cared very deeply for people, and look where it's put me. And uh, so far, I don't know if I'll ever be able to go home. Home's not the same anymore. Elizabeth and the New World Order control it, and they've done the British in. So I, I guess, um, I don't know. Maybe they'll tell about the mind control. It'll take the Rockefellers and Rothschilds, the media that controls, they control the media, they have to tell it for people to take notice. Um, so where does where does that go? I, I was going to go back to I've done nothing wrong with Snowden. I'm going to say this, and this is nothing against NSA. This is nothing against uh, Edward Snowden. But uh, I do know that Snowden um, had to be the program himself. Or he was personally at, somehow gotten through all that, and that would have to get that information. And I admire him, so I'm not taking anything away from him. I'm telling you that he, this fits in the patterns that I have, and uh, it's not just that they're spying. You know, Dr. Phil said something about on his program about a girl had a an addiction and.